man. Um, wow, uh, he's, he's a really hard act to follow. Uh, back there, it sounded like a cross between some kind of religious revival rally and the Reichstag burning, um, which is probably a reference is a little bit weird. Now, speaking of b being crazy, being crazy is fantastic, and you guys are wonderful. However, standing on chairs, not a good idea. Um, because we want you to walk away from here, not be carried away from here. Uh, getting up on each other's shoulders, look it, it looks marvelous. Yeah, I know, but again, you'll just fall from a greater height, and you guys are so young and frail, and it'd just be sad to see you all, you know. If I fell over, it would be no loss, but you guys, so just... Yeah, <laughs> oh, great, thanks. Um, so, you know, be excited, but also look like you're being cool about being excited. Be excited casually. Yeah. All right, cool. So... We are moving right along to Gigabyte and my mate Dino. He has a very, very cool prize to give away. But don't get too excited because he's got to give it to a living person. Get a little bit excited and give Dino a round of applause. Thanks, guys. Wow, you guys are excited. I don't know how I'm going to follow that dude. I got, a, I got a job for you next year, man. Gigabyte presentation. All right, I'm, uh, my name is Dino. I'm... Uh, I'm the tech dude at Gigabyte, so I do all the product development, and I'm the geek, you know. <laughs> Any geeks in the house? Okay, let's, let's try and convert a few more to geeks uh, after these presentations, I guess. Uh, what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to do a presentation, they're boring, so uh, I'm going to run a bunch of videos. After each video... <laughs> After each video, I'm going to ask a question about something in the video, so you, you'll have to concentrate on them. Uh, they are pretty fun, actually. I've pulled up some of the fun videos that, uh, that we've created on our YouTube channel about products and different sort of stuff. So we're going to turn it into a bit of a competition, and uh, I think I'm going to do four videos, so four people that I pick out or that answer correctly, I go into, I go into a final round and uh, get to win one of these suckers. <laughs> this is our latest uh, gaming motherboard. It's, uh, it's the Z77 chipset uh, Intel board uh, with some really super duper features, a few hundred bucks worth. So uh, it's, it's, you gotta listen up. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna run the first video. Uh, the first video was actually done by Intel um, recently, and uh, so just pay attention to it. So let's run video number one, please. At Intel, we've unleashed the power of overclocking with our new unlocked Intel Core processors, but made it so ridiculously easy, your grandmother could do it. Overclocking? to bring your scrapbook photos? Your system is fine as it is, Grandma. Why? <laughs> the girls and I are competing in a quilting bee, a 3D quilting bee. Granny's gonna level her blood off death night. Yes, yes, that's it. And we heard through the grapevine that we might need some extra horsepower. First, I go to the BIOS screen and change the multiplier. And then I save the settings. And my computer reboots. Just three steps that you can actually understand. <laughs> Turns out good things can come easy. Intel unlocked processors. Great system performance, cool overclocking. So easy, your grandma did do it. Time for you to one up grandma. Okay. 
so this video was done last year for the 2600 series CPUs. Now, now our Intel would have done a presentation, so I'm sure they mentioned the 3770K uh, CPUs. Same principle with Gigabyte. You don't have to tap any buttons or anything. You just click one button in Windows with Easy Tune, and you can overclock to 4.5 or whatever. So we make it a little bit simple than Intel. But the question is, did you pay attention? That guy paid attention. Yeah. All right. So the question is, please don't jump up on the chairs. What was the writing on grandma's uh, shirt? <laughs> what? <laughs> That, guy. that guy's not getting into the next round. Nah, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> so what was the answer? I see. Fragged people. Correct. Okay, I'm going to call you out at the end of the round. So uh, after the last video, I'll give you a call. I'll call you guys out on the stage. We'll do a final round. Cool. Well, you paid attention. I'll just consult my video order here. Let's see what we got next. Uh, okay. Oh, so Gigabyte's a very innovative company, and uh, one of the things that we do is we work with a lot of guys your age. Um, I hang out on forums a lot under Dinos22. So if you see me on forums or Twitter or whatever, that that's that's me. So. What what I normally do is I, I see what you guys talk about online and um, I feed it into the product and the pr uh, into the R&D team at HQ and they improve the product, you know, so they, they make it better. One of the things that we've done <coughs> a couple of years ago was uh, a thing called on and off charge. So, so what it does basically is you can have your PC turned off and you'll still be charging your iPads and your iPhones and smartphones and whatever else. So it also charges three times faster than normal as well. So I'm going to play a video now about on and off charts. So please pay attention again, and we'll do this again. Hi, this is Colin from Gigabyte. Most of us probably have at least one or two devices that use USB to charge the device. That's why a few years ago, Gigabyte has done a couple of pretty unique technologies that allow users to actually get a quick charge from their USB ports on their Gigabyte motherboards. Now, one of the first technologies we, we developed was the 3x power. So we've been able to provide up to three times the amount of power that a traditional USB port is able to provide. So for example, a traditional USB 3 port will provide up to 0.9 amps of power. Well, Gigabyte's motherboards are able to provide up to three times that. Now, we've also done some other things with the USB ports, like we've added independent fuses for each of the ports, and we've also widened the trace paths for the power to each of the ports, and that's how we're able to provide more power. Another technology that we developed about two years ago was called on-off charge. Now, on-off charge is a hardware and software solution that allows users to charge their mobile devices even while their PC is turned off. Now, for most people, uh, charging their device on a USB can be quite slow because a traditional port, like I said, off puts less power. Well, on the Gigabyte motherboards, because we have 3x power and on-off charge, we're able to actually charge your device almost as if you would uh, by plugging it into the wall. That's why in the past we've showed quite a few videos showing different devices that are able to charge, like the first generation iPad, the second generation iPad. So today I wanted to show you, um, with some of the recent media reports out there showing that the new iPad is having some problems charging, uh, I wanted to show you that our Gigabyte on-off charge is actually able to provide enough power to charge your new iPad using a Gigabyte motherboard. So in front of me here, I have a new generation iPad, or the third generation of iPad. As you can see, the, the Retina display is much clearer than the previous generation. But as you can see, we have got 10% of battery charge. So I'm going to just dismiss, dismiss this. And I've got my uh, charger, and I've also got on-off charge on this Gigabyte Z77 motherboard. 
What I've done is I've attached a power meter to actually show us how much power draw is being delivered by the, the USB port. So I'm going to plug this in. And as you can hear, the iPad is charging. And we're showing 1.97 or 96 amps. So that's actually delivering a lot more power than a traditional USB port will deliver. As I said, 0.9 amps is a traditional USB 3 port. So this is actually quick charging this device, almost as if it was plugged into the wall. So now I'm going to show what happens when we actually shut the PC off. So I'm going to unplug and shut down. And we'll see if this uh, iPad will actually charge with the PC turned off. So my PC is now turned off. I'm going to plug it back in, if I can. And as you can hear, the iPad is charging, and we're charging at about 0 0.94, 0.95 amps. So there you have it. Gigabyte's motherboards can support on-off charge with the new iPad. So we've just announced our full series Z77 uh, motherboards. They'll all support Gigabyte on-off charge, and all's, as well as our previous generation of motherboards will all support charging of the new iPad 3. Okay. You know what? I'm going to get my mate to answer this question first. Let's see if he can get it right. Where is he? Don't call me now. Where is my mate? Where is he? No, the other guy. Where? Oh, I've lost him. Oh, no. Ah, too, too bad. Too bad. Okay. All right. So it's a simple question. You've got to be a geek to answer this one, though. The meter, the multimeter, read out a uh, amperage. Don't, don't give an answer to someone else. Raise your hands up. I want to see everyone put their hands up. <laughs> Come here. What was the answer, man? What was the question again? Oh, go back to your seat, man. Come on. No, no. You got to know the answer right away. Come here. You. Yep. Glasses. Yep. Absolutely. So I'm going to call you out at the end, uh, and you and the other bloke are going to go to the final round. So it was 1.94, three times the standard charge, which is about 0.9 uh, normally. So <coughs> you get to charge, basically, you can from Gigabyte motherboards, any board, you can charge your iPhones and iPads much quicker. The next video is really cool. It, it was done by a friend of mine. Um, I, before my Gigabyte days, I was, uh, and still am actually, a bit of a extreme overclocker. So we use liquid nitrogen and all this sort of stuff. And that's actually what we're going to do after this uh, presentation. I'm going to set up, uh, we've got a couple of liquid nitrogen tanks. We're going to start uh, freezing some stuff. So you guys stick around for, for the show afterwards. So <coughs> this guy is a uh, French Canadian, has the worst accent in the world, but it's actually an interesting one to watch. It takes about a minute to tune in, I guess. But what, what, what he did and what we all did together, we went to <coughs> one of the factories in in Taiwan. Uh, Gigabyte's the only man motherboard manufacturer now that still has factories in Taiwan for high-end gear like the, like the Snipe N3 motherboard. <laughs> Best quality gear around. Absolutely. Can't turn it off either. So you can match it up with your cool master case. Um, okay, so what we did, we went to a factory there and uh, they let us in. I don't know why. Uh, and uh, so we did a whole bunch of these really weird videos. At one point, I don't know if it's shown on the video or not, he was uh, basically surfing on the, on the uh, moving, uh, moving tray where the boards are, where the board components are being put into. He was just doing the big surf there. Uh, I thought, oh, God, if, this, if our bosses see this, we're all in big trouble anyway. So just uh, check out this video. It's, uh, it's uh, pretty interesting. So you can find out how the motherboards are made. I'll ask questions later.
Welcome to Overclocking TV. Today we are at the Gigabyte factory in Nanping in Taiwan and we will show you how to make a motherboard from A to Z. A motherboard uses a lot of components and all of them are assembled on a PCB. PCB means printed circuit board and this makes the final mainboard you all know that is in your PC. The PCB arrived from another factory and the first process is to solder on the board or the SMD. SMD means surface mounted devices. SMD is a term used for all the components that don't have pin going through the other side of the PCB but have their electrical connection on the edge like the audio chip or below them like the chipset. Every part of the PCB that will be in electrical contact with the component gets a special soldering pass. The solder pass acts like a glue for all these chips before going to the reflow oven for definitive soldering. In that way, every small component can stay in the right position before soldering. As you can see, solder pass is applied to only the PCB space where you will have a component. All the motherboard today have really thin and small components that are directly placed on the board called SMD, Surface Mounted Devices. The high speed chip placer can place from 5 to 10 components per second, it's really fast. Most of the components mounted in this machine are around a millimeter wide and must be very precisely disposed on the PCB. Today, motherboard have components on both sides. The first side that go to the factory process is the back. Once the back side is done, a machine switches the motherboard to the other side and the process start again to the SMT line. After all the small components, it's time to put on the motherboard the chipset and the chip that will make the, your board working, as well as the CPU sockets. Before being disposed on the motherboard, each chipset is verified by a different set of light to check if there is any problem about the soldering point or alignment of the chipset itself. You can see other chips like audio, SATA and USB 3. They are disposed on the board directly by this machine, as well as the CPU sockets. As example, other chips bigger than your finger is placed by this machine. At this time, your motherboard has SMDs on the board and can go to the reflow oven for soldering. The soldering pass melts by high temperature and stick to the component and the PCB. The temperature goes up to 245 degrees Celsius by different level. At this point, electrical connection and mechanical connection are made. Your mainboard now have all the small resistors as well as the chipset and the socket. It's time for the visual inspection. This inspection avoids any misplacement or missing parts. Components smaller than 2 mm can't be checked by human, but the AOI is there for it. The automated optical inspection machine is checking if there is any missing or misplaced component. It's also checking all the components that have visible soldering points like the audio chip. And finally, the ICT integrated chip tester can verify if every chip that have soldering point below them, like the chipset, are well connected. It does test if the chipset is well soldered electrically to the board, but not if the chipset is working itself. 
There is a dedicated floor for the new verification, especially for server components. Some boards are tested by X-ray to verify the quality of the soldering. This inspection is high quality service that has a very high end and server board to be checked for more in-depth analysis. Once this last testing is made, it's time to go to the DIP dual inline package. The DIP stage is the second big important process when making a motherboard. First, you have a manual insertion. All the small components and the chipset has been added already. It's time to plug all the other components that have been going through the PCB. During this stage, all the components are manually inserted. You can see a long chain of employees inserting the in-out connectors, power plug, PCI Express, RAM slot, and other the chocks and the solid capacitors around the CPU socket. Before being definitely soldered on the board, each inserted part needs to be in the right place and well positioned. This is the goal of the inspection before the wave soldering. The principle of the wave solder is easy. The motherboard has its latest component on one side, with pins going through the PCB to the other side. The wave solder comes and touches the back of the PCB and pins with soldering iron melting, and that way components are soldered to the board. After the wave soldering process, you usually have residues that are cleaned with a large brush, making the back of your motherboard very shiny. Another inspection is made with some adjustment with solder iron if needed. Then inserting a mount on the board before another inspection and checkup by the ICT integrated chip tester. Your board is now fully functional, but the biggest quality control still need to be done. Employees are testing everything from the connectivity to the burn test of the main board. The function box allow easy switch on switch off of the component as well as the peripheral for the testing purpose. As part of the gigabyte quality testing, 100% of the motherboard are tested in the factory. Basic to advanced functionalities are being verified. Once the board passed all the testing and quality analysis, the board is referenced and sent to the next process. This is the final step for your motherboard and this is the box you will see in the shop. At the factory, the boxes are just flat, cardboard, but then quickly shaped by an automatic machine. Employees are sticking barcode and reference number on the boxes as well as the board, then scan the different serial number. Your board is now almost ready. You just need to put the accessories, manual, driver CD and close the package. Each box goes to big package that are weighted then strapped. This is the end of our videos, and now you know exactly how is made a motherboard. We hope to see you soon and enjoy overclocking TV videos.
guys, Trufman from Overclocking TV, and we are in the Gigabyte factory, and we just found something very crazy. Come on. One, two, three, four. Okay, this is the longest video you'll see today. The, the rest of them are only two minutes long, but I, I think it was an interesting video. Was it an interesting video for you guys? Yeah. Simple question. Name any motherboard model you've seen on there. You, you sh do you know? Come up. Um, XR58 UD9. XR58 UD9. That was the last one. Okay, okay, I'll take that. That's cool. Yeah, UD9. That was a flagship uh, flagship board at the time. No, that was actually the the socket previous to the. It was a 1366. That's cool, man. It's not a. There's a lot of sockets. Intel changes them all the time. We're going to release a UD9 very soon as well. So we're working on something pretty crazy at the moment. I'm part of that project team. So you guys are going to, you guys are going to see a pretty sweet board soon. All right. So we've got one more person to pick. So let's start the next video. And then uh, we'll do the final round. A while back, my colleague Stu introduced 3D BIOS on our X79 platform. Well, Gigabyte, we're very excited to be able to introduce 3D BIOS to our Z77 platform as well. So in front of me here, I have a system that has our 3D BIOS running. So for those of you who want to check out our, uh, or who haven't seen our video from Stu, uh, you might want to check that out to get a fuller understanding of our 3D BIOS. So quickly, I just want to show you some of the new things that we've done for Z77. So first up, as you can see, we have a picture of our motherboard that shows different areas that you can actually control the settings for. You can change this view of the motherboard, um, and each of the different sections, like the memory section, you can just click on easily and make your changes using the slider bars. So memory, CPU frequency, voltages, um, that is all able to be changed through our 3D BIOS utility. We've also added some new icons down at the bottom here as well. So for example, our boot priority. It'll list all the different boot devices that you have, your hard drives, your thumb drives, things like that. And you can change the priorities by just moving these. I only have one device on here now, but you can get my meaning. And also languages. We have multi-languages this time for Z77 platform and 3D BIOS. So this, again, is for more novice users. Uh, we give a lot of help as to what sort of changes, what the influence on the board are, so people actually can understand what changes are going to be made. But for people who are used to using a traditional BIOS, we also allow them to do that as well through our uh, professional mode. So as you can see, we have all the usual settings that we have for our traditional BIOS. You can still use a keyboard and mouse. Um, you can just go into each individual settings, make your changes, um, so we've got both the professional version and our uh, 3D BIOS version as well. So that's Gigabyte's new 3D BIOS for our Z77 platform. Quick, right? Okay, so this is the last person. Let's see uh, if you're going to make a bit of an effort. <laughs> that guy's already standing up. I haven't asked a question yet, man. You are very keen, my, s my friend. All right. What do we call our BIOS? Come on, stand up. I can't see anyone standing up. All right. Okay. I can't let the guys at the back miss out. What's the bias called, man? Not really sure. Oh, no. Oh, no. You're not sitting down, man. All right. Is it the Friday bias? 
Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay, come to the front, all the guys that are. Come, come to the front. Actually, you know what? Watch the, watch the next video, and then I'll get you to come to the front. Watch this video. You, you, there's a, one, one more guy at the front. And who was the last guy that I picked out again? Yeah. So just keep pay attention to this last video, and then we'll uh, see if you can remember what was said. I'm going to ask you a tougher question this time. This is Colin from Gigabyte, and today we're at our VIP suite at Taipei 101 for Computex 2012. And I quickly wanted to introduce our motherboard lineup this year. Um, in front of me, we have a motherboard wall. Uh, we have many Gigabyte motherboards that we're showing this year at Computex, but I wanted to highlight some of the new boards that we're showing this year. So first up, we have a new technology that we're launching called Ultra Durable 5. Now, Ultra Durable 5, we're actually using high current capable components for the CPU VRM zone. So we ha are launching that Ultra Durable 5 on a range of our, our motherboards. First up, we have our X79 motherboards, our refreshes. So this is our X79S UP5 Wi-Fi. So this board comes bundled with Wi-Fi card solution, Wi-Fi Bluetooth. Um, it also has an S naming, um, and the name as you heard, and this is SAS. So basically, we're adding SAS ports to X79 platform because we're using the server chipset. Um, the server chipset supports SAS, it supports ECC memory, and it also supports uh, higher end uh, server CPUs like Xeon. So I want to jump to Z77 platform. So this one is actually quite unique because this is our highest end Z77 motherboard that we ha we're not selling yet, but we will be shortly. This is our uh, Z77 X UP7. So we've changed our naming scheme a little bit. Uh, as you can see, instead of UD7, it's called UP7. P stands for power, so this means it's the ultra durable 5 technology. Of course, this has a lot of our uh, similar features for our Z77 platform. Um, we have some overclocking features on board for this one, of course. Um, we have uh, actually four-way graphics support on this board. So this one, when it does launch, is going to be a, a highly uh, uh, featured motherboard. And then moving down the skew, I wanted to show you this guy quickly. This is our Z77X uh, UP5TH motherboard. So this is Z77 again, and the TH stands for Thunderbolt. So as you can see on this motherboard here, we've got uh, two Thunderbolt ports. This is actually the, we're the only motherboard manufacturer to implement on the desktop PC uh, dual Thunderbolt bolt ports. So you can actually uh, connect uh, up to six de devices off of a single port, um, so 12 total devices off this Thunderbolt port. So this is our Z77X Thunderbolt board, and we have many other uh, motherboards that will support Z77 platform. We have Z77D3H, uh, and so on. And then this guy I wanted to show you quickly here, this is our Z77 Micro ATX gaming motherboard. This is our Sniper M3, and we've launched this one um, a few months ago. So this one has the high-end creative audio on board and a lot of our, our gaming features. As you can see, the color scheme is slightly different as well. And then throughout our motherboard lineup here, we have several of the other features, our motherboard chipsets. So we have Z77, we also have H77, so this is good for things like home uh, theater devices in your living room. Uh, we also have B75 motherboards, and B75 is basically small business platform. They come bundled with a free software called small, Smart Business Advantage from Intel, and um, we'll show you a separate video that describes those features. So that's basically our uh, Intel lineup uh, on our motherboard wall here at Computex. Okay, I'm going to ask two questions. One's going to go to one more person. What's the color of the motherboards in the in the gaming range? Come here. You're in the middle, yeah. You better get it right, man. Uh, black and green. Woohoo! All right, stay here. Can I get the other guys to come up that um, got their questions right? One, two, three, four, five. All right.
<laughs> I'm going to ask a tough one. So Colin was talking about some new motherboards and he was trying to explain names and one of the names he mentioned, uh, this is first in for best dress basically. So you put your hand up. One of the things that he was talking about was TH. What does it stand for? Good stuff, man. All right, so this is our winner for uh, the... <laughs> this motherboard doesn't have a Thunderbolt. It's a gaming board, but yeah, congratulations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Congratulations. We've got a... <laughs> All right, guys, that wraps up my presentation. I'm going to be setting up uh, a bit of a liquid nitrogen overclocking show uh, at the Gigabyte booth, and we've got some giveaways. We've got some... Motherboards and uh, keychains, we've got uh, pens, lots of different stuff. So, uh, not a lot of it, but uh, the mouse pads and whatnot. So, swing, swing by and, you know, take, take a piece and, um, yeah, we can, we'll show off some uh, uh, liquid nitrogen overclocking stuff a bit later on. Okay, thanks very much for your attention.